CD Lamb did not work out due to a foot injury, and that's the last thing the Cowboys need, given the fact they're already super thin at that position. And don't even bring up the fact the Cowboys got rid of Amari Cooper and Cedric Wilson, signing with Cleveland and Miami, respectively. According to Cowboys VP Stephen Jones, it's just a cut on his foot. But Jones also praised the run game, which is... Definitely want to, you know, emphasize the run game and, you know, utilize uh, Tony and myself. Uh, you know, I think, I think it would definitely wear us down a defense where you got two backs coming at you. And, uh, you know, if we if we can uh, run the ball efficiently and uh, control that line of scrimmage, we're going to be that much better of an offense. Our San Antonio Spurs announcing they'll tip off their 50th anniversary season at home October 19th against the Charlotte. The dates for four out-of-market games will be played outside the NTNT Center and the Alamo City this coming season. The biggest will be January 13th next year when the Spurs return to the Alamo Dome for the 50th anniversary celebration. Remember that the Spurs left the old Hemisphere Arena after the Alamo Dome was opened in 93, and that was their home until the SBC be configured to hold 65,000 plus that night. It's going to be loud. The Silver and Black also there two games in Austin for April 6th and 8th at the new Moody Center. The loan date in Mexico is set up for Mexico City coming up on December 17. Fire again this season after going 5-1 and one in District 13 5A Division 1 and finishing as area finalists with an 8-4 and four overall record. Head coach Alex Franco welcomes back eight starters after losing 41 seniors. The Dragons will have to rely on their defense to start this season behind their linebackers. You know, this school has made the playoffs 16 straight years. We've won a playoff game six straight years. And what that allows us to do is it makes our job as coaches easy. The groups before us, they extremely hard workers on and off the field. So it sets the tone, and the young guys see that, and they see what it takes and what it's all about. For us, we're just trying to keep the streak alive. I mean, same as every other year. We're going to do it. We're going to work. We're going to work for it, obviously. Same tenacity, the same, like, mindset to win. Um, and hopefully just keep the streak alive of the playoffs. Southwest Dragons will kick off their season on August 26th in Lockhart at 7 p.m. And that's a look at morning sports. Yeah, it's getting busy. <laughs> Time now, 442 and 79 degrees for now. As exciting as the first day of school can be, it is also exhausting getting back into a routine. We're going to have some ways to help your kids succeed. Next, new details on a deadly incident at a North Texas youth football game, which led to a coach being killed. And welcome back, it's 445. Witnesses are saying a former NFL player started the brawl at a youth football game south of Dallas, which led to a coach being killed. ABC's Marcus Moore has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the tragic shooting of a Texas youth football coach. Uh-oh, my dude got a stick. These new images may offer clarity into the chaos. Multiple witnesses say it was instigated by NFL star Akib Talib, who they say was arguing on the field. Police say the argument led to the physical altercation. The incident ending, police say, with Akib's brother... Overnight, GMA speaking to two of the victim's lifelong friends. He was a leader. To be successful. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from Texas and the very latest on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Well, we've been talking about returning to class now for a couple of weeks. Back to school also means getting back into a routine. And the healthier the routine, the better.
After a fun in the sun summer, it can be an adjustment to tablets and laptops can emit blue light, which can disturb kids' sleep patterns. Of course, your student needs to be up to date on the required immunizations like tetanus, polio, chickenpox, and for older kids, the meningococcal vaccine, which prevents meningitis. Flu season will be here before you know it. So health experts recommend getting the flu shot by the end of October. And of course, the COVID-19 vaccine offers protection too. As kids gather, they'll share all kinds of things, including germs. Hand washing can prevent a lot of colds and other respiratory infections. They'll have a new routine at school, so remind them to wash with soap and water for at least 20 seconds at key times, like after bathroom breaks, before lunch, or after playing outside. You can boost your child's health by sending them off with a healthy breakfast and packing a balanced lunch with whole grains, protein, and fruit or veggie, and dairy. If you can keep it interesting, there's a greater chance they'll eat it. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And let's look outside with Trans Guide, looking at I-37 at Salado, where things are pretty quiet this morning, but they are moving. Let's say good morning to Justin Horn and talk about uh, possible scenarios for some much needed and, and more rainfall around here in South Texas. We have been through such a brutal summer. It is great to see our seven day forecast full of rain chances. Can't guarantee you that it's going to be a lot of heavy rain, but at least it is there. And we're going to start with some rain chances as early as this evening. Not right now, though. It's pretty quiet out there. 80 degrees at the airport, 79 stints and 78 Kelly, 79 at Randolph. We don't have a lot of wind out there. We're not expecting an overly windy day. 75 degrees in Kerrville, 78 right now in Hondo, 78 down there in Pleasanton, 79 at Randolph and 81 Canyon Lake at this hour. Dew points are high. This has not changed. It's been a humid couple of days. Today will be humid too. We'll still worry about those heat index values probably jumping above 100. They did for a brief time yesterday. Notice we don't have any rain or really much cloud cover over San Antonio right now, but let me take you up north. We've got some showers and storms along a boundary that stretches from West Texas into uh, really the southeastern portion of the country. And it's along this boundary. It's very weak, but it's along this boundary that we should see more showers and storms today. And that is the encouraging news. So we're starting to get some of these fronts at least edge a little bit closer. And that's a sign that we could get the, the pattern to get a little more busy. Here is the severe weather risk. And I do want to point this out because I think we could see one or two strong storms this evening. But notice where that is north and east of San Antonio. So places like Austin, perhaps San Marcos, that's where we could see maybe some gusty winds with some of these storms. Something we'll watch this evening as the radar becomes a little bit more busy. Let's time it out. Seven o'clock this morning, not much there. As we get to two o'clock, that's when we start to see some isolated showers and storms developing. Really, I think across the northern parts of the hill country, still quiet here in San Antonio. So after school's fine. But as we get towards dinner time, five o'clock, that's when we start to see some of these showers and storms erupting. And I think this happens pretty quick. We're going to put in a 40% chance of rain for San Antonio as these storms edge a little bit closer by the evening hours. Now, it will still be hit or, hit or miss, so it's, it's not going to be everyone gets rain, but at least there will be some good rainmakers here, I think. And this is the 10 o'clock hour still detecting some isolated showers and storms. By the time we get towards, say, uh, tomorrow morning, things quiet a little bit. We get a few light showers. And then tomorrow afternoon, we do this all again. Although rain chances will be a little bit lower, this wheat front of boundary is still around, so we're going to leave in a 30% chance of rain on your Friday. A couple days here where we could see some rain chances. So here's how I think it plays out as far as rain chances go. Your best opportunity is going to be up across the hill country, New Braunfels, San Marcos, Blanco, Kerrville, 60% chance of rain. If you're watching us from San Antonio, 40% chance of rain. And if you're watching rain chances fall off very quickly. And that's just because of where this front sets up. It doesn't make it really any further south than the city of San Antonio. So your case at 12 hour forecast 78 7 o'clock by 10 a.m. 84 88 by 11 a.m. and by 3 p.m. 97. Very quickly in the tropics, we're still watching this 
uh, developing system here. Thunderstorms, but not uh, not looking all that organized. It is going to move into the Gulf of Mexico. We think that there's about a 30% chance of development over the next five days. What you combine that with the tropical moisture, you get some good rain chances. Here's how the seven day forecast looks. 40% chance of some showers and storms late this evening, 30% chance tomorrow. Saturday is probably a quiet day, but we get to add in some more rain chances. Sunday as some of that tropical moisture moves in. And next week, if it plays out how the models are looking, we could get some good downpours. Uh, we'll be watching that, especially Tuesday and Wednesday. Wow, look at that. I know, a low 92. That looks exciting as well. It's incredible. We haven't seen a seven day like that in a long while. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, Justin. 452, about 79 degrees. And coming up next, Marvel's She Hulk begins streaming today on Shark Tank. Pick three numbers, 665, Fireball, zero. Daily four numbers, 4855, Fireball, five. 10. 17, 21, 31, 34. A lot of Texas, 10, 15, 17, 36, 50, 51. And your Powerball numbers. Four fifty six Marvel's latest series debuts on Disney Plus and Shark Tank gets a new guest star. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Who's your best friend? Mickey. Eh, spandex. Spandex is your best friend. She Hulk, Attorney at Law, is open for business. The latest Marvel series for Disney Plus debuted today with star Tatiana Maslany playing the big green lawyer. And she tells me you don't have to be a super fan to enjoy it because while yes, it is a comic book series, at its heart, it's a sitcom. And people who don't even know the Marvel world or like have never seen a Marvel movie or whatever, don't think it's for them, I think are going to find their 
place in this show. Look for a new episode of She-Hulk Attorney at Law every Thursday on Disney+. Plus. A new high-profile shark entering the shark tank. Gwyneth Paltrow will be a guest shark on the new season of the ABC Investing Show, which returns for season 14 next month. You're never too old for NFTs. 84-year-old acting legend Anthony Hopkins getting into the digital game with a collection inspired by his film characters and his own artwork. And happy birthday to legendary actor, director, and producer Robert Redford. He's 86 today. While the resident and Cosby Show star Malcolm Jamal Warner is 52. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens and ABC News, Los Angeles. 457, 79 degrees. And still head on GMSA, what you need to know about a new wave of COVID-19 booster shots that target the latest strain of the virus and when they'll be available. And did you just upgrade to an iPhone 13? We'll tell you when the iPhone 14 is about to be out. We'll tell you about that in Tech Bytes. And a quick look at the roads with Transguide again, looking at that shot there at I-37 at Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. A late night shooting on the northwest side leaves a man in critical condition. We have details on what happened coming up. The CDC looking at a major overhaul. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The blistering new report on the agency coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam, we got pretty hot yesterday afternoon. We are hoping some rain will cool us off. And it is in the forecast, so. Joining us, hope you're having a wonderful week so far, and things may just get better with that chance of rain. Let's get an update. That we can start to see some showers and storms back in the forecast and that continues over into tomorrow. Here's why. As we look across the state of Texas, we've got showers and storms up across parts of the Texas handle north of Texas. That's along a frontal boundary. This is not a strong front, but it is a front 
that can help to kick up showers and storms. It sinks south into our area a little bit later this evening, and that's why we're encouraged and why we've uh, brought up rain chances just a little bit. These are the forecast high temperatures today. Notice what the front does for parts of North Texas. Only mid 80s in Dallas. Midland, Lubbock and Amarillo could be in the 70s today. Now we're still going to be baking 98 degrees and it will feel hotter than that with the humidity, but hopefully we get some relief a little bit later this evening, as I said, and here's how I think rain chances play out. Expect the best shot of rain here in San Antonio to be between 5 and 9 p.m. this evening. Better chance will reside to our north across the hill country and this isn't it we've got more rain chances in the seven day forecast and we're going to tell you all about it here in just a few minutes but let's get you get you set for your morning commute good morning steven how are things looking things look great justin we got a shot at 37 at salado creek here but let's take a quick drive around town and see what drivers can really expect i'm actually going to change the rotator up and you can see 35 south and at maine not a lot of traffic this morning in fact i drive along i-10 each and every morning and thankfully there wasn't really a lot to slow me down you could see there on that trans guide camera and I 10 at the Y things look great as folks are getting their days started early, but make sure to watch out. As I always like to mention, there are several active construction zones and we're going to be getting to that a little bit later on in the newscast. But for now, those travel times are going to look pretty good for you, especially if you're going to be heading into the Alamo City from any of these in from Castroville and Lytle 35 in the northbound lanes. You can expect a 16 minute drive time. So each of these areas is not really seen a slowdown just yet, but it's early enough to where they can enjoy the drive to maybe work or grab that cup of coffee this early in the morning. Hey, maybe a breakfast taco. Why not? But you can see on Transguide things are quiet so far. Again, we're bringing you some construction updates in the next few minutes. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man is dead after attempting to cross a busy highway on the city's southwest side. Our Jonathan Cotto joins us live and walks us through this horrible incident. Stephanie, that's right. That crash happening right here on the 8100 block of Southwest Loop 410. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like around 10 p.m. last night. We know police say the victim was a man in his 30s or 40s. An individual came along and struck one of the police cars. Luckily, no officers were inside of that police unit when it was hit, but the damage was pretty significant. Police temporarily closed the road as they worked to process the scene of the crash. Back out live, they tell us the people inside of that second vehicle were taken to an area hospital, but this case still remains under investigation. Reporting from the city's southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Jonathan, thank you. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man in his 20s is in critical condition after a shooting on the northwest side, and officers are looking for the shooter. Officers received multiple calls to the 4,000 block of Gardendale around 9.45 last night for shots fired. When police got there, they found the man in his mid to late 20s shot. Where that shooting happened. Well, a new batch of revamped COVID-19 shots could be available to millions of Americans within the next three weeks. As the CDC plans for the rollout, there is new news this morning about a major reset for the nation's top public health agency. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Centers for Disease Control urging states to begin pre-ordering newly updated COVID-19 booster shots. As every day. The original COVID-19 strain and the BA4 and 5 subvariants making up an estimated 99% of all new infections. The revamp shots meant to target those dominant strains. These are substantial upgrades in our vaccines and those vaccines are coming very, very soon. The FDA and CDC could approve the boosters within the next three weeks and make them available to anyone 12 and up for Pfizer and 18 and over for Moderna. I would like to get to a point where every adult in America who wants a vaccine uh, can get one. What's really limited us 
uh, is a lack of resources, but we are pulling from other high priority items. Amid the booster rollout plan, the CDC also headed for a major overhaul. A new blistering review of the agency found during this and the previous administration failed to meet expectations amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky, who ordered the internal review, calling for a reset, telling agency staff, quote, we are responsible for some pretty dramatic, pretty public mistakes. The agency review found the CDC's COVID-19 guidelines on masks, vaccines and more have been confusing and overwhelming, echoing public criticism. It's like contradicting. It's like a lot of stuff going on. Oh, don't do this, don't do that. And then we have to listen to both. And as part of the sweeping changes, Dr. Walensky is calling for internal CDC staffing changes. She also wants the agency to share information faster and in plain, easy to understand language. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. And time now, 507 and 79 degrees for now. Still ahead on the morning show, we'll tell you when Apple is set to launch the latest version of the iPhone. Also up next, how the city of San Antonio and other organizations are planning to address the problem of more families being unable to afford a home. Outside with live cam, if you were hoping we'd see more showers and storms like we've seen. News. In the extended forecast and those showers might be here sooner than later. Justin will explain coming up. Come. Haven for Hope has seen a rise in the number of families who are working but simply cannot afford to find a home. Now, many other agencies that serve those in need are also seeing a rise in people.
people seeking assistance. The agencies, along with the city and county, are partnering up to find out affordable housing and as a short-term resolution. But meanwhile, several projects are in the works to build homes and units that poor families can afford. In May, San Antonio voters approved a $1.2 billion bond that will partly help create a So it's a coordinated effort, um, and we think that we'll have really good products and, and housing units to, in, in hopefully just a, a short amount of time. And not only are leaders trying to convince landlords to allocate affordable units now, they also have to convince communities to allow the development of low-income housing. It is 511, 79 degrees. And still ahead, how Airbnb is blocking people who try to use the rental service to throw a party. Plus, how TikTok says it plans to help fight misinformation during the midterm elections. Are you tired of washing dishes? Well, flip the way you clean them with Dawn Platinum Easy's. And squeeze. Dawn Platinum's more powerful formula breaks down and removes grease four times faster. Huh, nice. No flip, no mess. Platinum is also a go-to grease cleaner for your sink, your countertops, and a pre-treat stains on laundry. Parallax is different. It works naturally with the water in your body to unblock your gut. Free your gut and your mood will follow. You feeling better while making time together better. Lipton. Stop chugging. Start sipping. By 15, Apple will reportedly introduce the new iPhone 14 at an event early next month. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, the countdown to Apple's next big announcement. Say the iPhone 14 line will be unveiled at a streamed event on September 7th. Other products are also expected to be rolled out, including three Apple Watch after the event. Airbnb has launched new technology that can help identify people who rent homes just to throw parties. The screening tools are able to zero in on suspicious reservations and can block them before homeowners ever see the request. And TikTok now has an in-app midterms election center. The feature will allow users to access state-by-state -state information in more than 40 languages, including how to register to vote and how to vote by mail. TikTok also has plans in place to fight election misinformation. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 516. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Well, there is not a lot to talk about, thankfully. I was getting a look at the TransGuide cameras. You can see there's just some quiet roadways there. 281 at San Pedro, 281 at Olmos. Again, just the morning's been... Computers out. Out there, and if you are one of those lucky few that can enjoy these roadways, just remember to drive carefully because there is not a lot to show you there. To the map, same situation, just seeing some green on the screen, a little bit of active construction as well that continues to take place in and around our area. So here's another spot to be on the lookout for I-10 over on the east side of Bear County. This is an area we mention quite often. Detour work has been taking place since Monday, but according to TxDOT, that should be wrapping up tomorrow. It's Friday, August 19th. It takes place during the day, early in the morning, around nine in the morning, I should say, to four in the afternoon. And it's during that time drivers can expect the eastbound exit and entrance ramps for Santa Clara to be closed. But that information, you know where it's at, grab those phones, open the camera app and scan that QR code. All the information on construction zones happening right now in and around our area is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. That QR code will take you directly there. Just remember, scroll to the bottom of the screen, and guys. Good reminder. Thank you, Stephen. You bet. Let's talk uh, about rain chances. Yeah, we got some rain chances coming up. And real quick before we jump into that, I, I want to mention that on Monday, if you were watching us during the noon show, we came on with a tornado warning. We had a tropical funnel develop with some of that tropical activity that was around. And indeed, we did have a touchdown of a tornado, according to the Weather Service. Now, this is really small. It was an EF zero, traveled about a quarter of a mile. This was near Moore. Didn't uh, never crossed over I-35. Had peak winds of about 75 miles per hour, but it did do some damage to some roofs and some trees. So we wanted to pass that along. That was back on Monday. 
as uh, those storms work their way through South Texas. Right now it's quiet. 80 degrees at the airport. Dew point is at 72. South southwesterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Feels like 84. It's still pretty sticky. 75 Kerrville, 77 Hondo, 78 New Braunfels, 78 in Gonzales, and basically mid 70s, although the airport's still reporting 80 as we said. Dew point trend today. Sticky to start, or we're still going to get some decent humidity in the afternoon. Heat index will probably be up around 100. Yet again, this has kind of been the trend last couple days, right? Uh, and I think today will be no different. Heat index around 5 o'clock, 99. Notice it is a little cooler, though, than yesterday. You'll still get some pretty big heat indices down to the south. But a little cooler because we have that opportunity for rain, and here's why. As we look north, we've got some showers and storms across north Texas. Pretty active weather, and that's along a weak frontal boundary, which is sliding south. This frontal boundary sinks into South Texas later this evening, and that's why we think we'll get some showers and storms to kick up. Here's the timing. 2 o'clock. Uh, I know kids get out of school. Nothing to worry about here in San Antonio, but if you're in the Hill Country, a couple pop-up showers will be possible. It's around 5 o'clock dinner time that we start to see better chances of rain arriving. 40% chance here in San Antonio, even better chances to the north. And some of these storms, by the way, could be on the strong side. Some gusty winds possible but we're not expecting widespread severe weather. And then by 10 p.m., things starting to quiet down a little bit, but we're still going to have some showers and storms out there, something to watch this evening and tonight. Tomorrow, that frontal boundary is still there. It's kind of washing out, but still enough to get some showers and storms going yet again. Tomorrow, it's about a 30% chance. So, uh, you know, have your umbrella on standby just in case with this possibility for rain. Here's how I think it, it works out geographically. 60% chance to the north in the Hill Country, 40% chance here in San Antonio. And then if you're south in San Antonio, unfortunately, rain chances are not as good just because that boundary does not make it that far south. Uh, so again, here in town, scattered activity today. KSAT 12 hour forecast, it'll be near 80 by 8 o'clock. Noontime 92. By the afternoon, we're talking 98 degrees, but a 30% chance of rain at 4 o'clock, 40% chance at 5 o'clock, and then uh, we have those chances again lasting between about 5 and 9 p.m., our best chances here in San Antonio. Meantime, in the tropics, still watching this wave. It's not doing a whole lot because it's uh, essentially over land at this point, but as it crosses the Yucatan and moves into the Gulf of Mexico, the Hurricane Center is now looking at about a 30% chance of development. I really think it runs out of real estate here, probably turns the corner, moves into Mexico. But what I do think it does for us is throw some tropical moisture in our direction. And that really is a good thing because by Sunday, we get to add rain chances back in. And as some of this, some of this tropical moisture pulls out ahead of some, um, of some energy early next week, could mean some decent rain chances for us, some of the best chances we've had in a while. 40% chance late tonight, uh, especially north of I-10. 30% chance tomorrow. Small chance Saturday. Saturday really looks pretty quiet, but 94 Sunday, mid-90s Monday with a 30% chance. One day short of tying the record for most 100-degree days. What if doesn't happen? What if we fall one, one day short? I'll be okay with that. For August or for the... 21 78 degrees and up next in your morning spotlight previews of Zach Apron and beer run and Jenna Ortega in the Adams family spinoff on Wednesday. A review of lottery numbers this morning. Pick three six six five fireball zero. Your daily four numbers four eight five five fireball five cash five ten seventeen twenty one thirty one thirty four a lot of Texas 10 15 17 36 50 51. And your Powerball numbers, 23, 28, 41, 50, 55, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. An iconic teenager obsessed with death, a bureaucrat afraid he's wasted his life, and a guy just trying to help his buddies. CNN's David Daniel has a trio of trailers for you in today's Hollywood Minute. Do these protesters not know that our soldiers see that on TV? I'd like to go over to Vietnam, track down all the boys in the neighborhood, and give them a beer. I could do that. Do what? I'm going to Vietnam, and I'm... Bill Murray co-star in the film, which is based on a true story. The run begins September 30th on Apple TV+. Plus. It's no wonder I didn't notice what I was becoming. Dad, you're right. If only to be alive for one day. But I realize it. 
I don't know how. Bill Nye is a terminally ill bureaucrat desperate to live before he dies in Living. The drama, set in post-World War II London, arrives in theaters December 23rd. Finally, you will be among peers who understand you. Maybe you'll even make some friends. Want to take a stab at being social? I do like stabbing. The first teaser trailer. Take stars in Tim Burton's Adams Family spin-off series, which is due to debut on Netflix this fall. In Hollywood, I'm David. Five twenty-seven now, seventy-eight degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the White House is expected to address. A rising number of monkeypox cases later this morning. We're going to have a first look at what officials are expected to announce. And a closer look at how this year's record inflation has impacted school supply prices. Making headlines this morning, monkeypox cases up 20% worldwide. What the White House is saying about the number of vaccines available here in the U.S. And let's look outside with live cam. We're at 78 degrees for now. We expect things to heat up, but we're excited about a chance of rain. Yes, we are. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, August 18th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a wonderful week, and we are excited about that rain. So let's get over to Justin. Here's four words that will win in August every time. Rain chances, cooler temperatures. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I agree. I uh, completely agree. And, you know, the thing about it is today could be our hottest day that we see in the seven day forecast because beyond this we have some moisture, maybe some rain chances and that starts as early as this evening. So let's look at some of the headlines here as we look at the time lapse. We haven't had much cloud cover this morning, by the way, so things are fairly clear outside. We'll see more upper 90s today. Humidity will be there, so the heat index is still 100 plus. OK, we've dealt with that. That was the case yesterday, but today again, maybe our last day of this. By this evening, we get scattered storms, especially north of I-10. And then there could be more rain in the extended forecast. The pattern becomes more active as we head into next week. What a fantastic change from what has been a really, really long summer. 80 degrees right now. Dew point is at 72. Feels like 84 outside with south southwesterly winds at about 7 miles per hour. Here's the setup across the state. We've got showers and storms up across the Texas Panhandle. Some activity right along a weak frontal boundary, which is going to slowly sink south into our area. Again, later this evening is when I think rain chances pick up here in San Antonio. So this morning, just partly cloudy, 79 at 8 o'clock. By noontime, 92, mostly sunny. And we'll get those temperatures up close to 100 this afternoon. But notice by about 3 or 4 o'clock, we start to add in some rain chances with our best shot starting uh, after 5 p.m., 40% chance after a high temperature of 98. We'll talk more about these rain chances and the seven-day forecast, which, again, is fairly busy coming up in just a bit. Let's get over to Stephen now and talk morning commute. Any issues? Not that busy over here, Justin. Let's get a quick look around town, I-10 West Avenue, uh, getting a few more folks out there. And that's great because people are getting their day started early with us, and there's nothing major that's going to slow them down just yet. Of course, things are pretty early at this point, but uh, we are seeing some active construction that continues to take place. And as I always like to mention, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. But for now, we'll give you a view of the map. Now, as in the last few seconds, as I was talking, notice a crash that popped up there near 281 right there near the 410 area. So we're going to have to find out exactly what's taking place there and how that's going to impact the driver's commute time, but right now it doesn't look too bad. We'll get a closer look in a few minutes, but if you are going to be traveling into San Antonio along I-10, well, it looks pretty good right now. 24 minutes in the eastbound lanes. If you're traveling in from Bernie, 26 minutes, so we're still pretty good if you're heading in the 281 on along 281, pardon me, in the southbound lanes, traveling in from Mulverde and I-35 southbound, coming in from New Braunfels. We look, we're looking like a 25-minute drive time, so not too bad there, and as we take you back to Transguide, getting just a tad bit busier there at 37 at Salado Creek. We'll find out what's happening there along 281 and 410 and bring you those updates in the next few minutes. Guys. Natalie, breaking news. It's already been quite a morning for some sheriff's deputies. They say they had to chase down three women after an assault at a home in West Bear County. It ended with their arrests. Trina Weber is live where it all began on a street called Round Ridge. That's off of Shanefield Road. Katrina, what happened? 
Well, good morning. Uh, this is one of those stories where you almost have to ask what didn't happen. Uh, deputies tell us they had not only a chase, but a, an attempted escape not once but twice, and also a busted window on their patrol car. That car right here in the middle of the street called Round Ridge, you can see a big pile of glass. That's the window that was busted out. Now, deputies say they originally got a 911 hang-up call. They did some investigating and realized that that call came from a home here on uh, Round Ridge. They believe that an assault took place. They believe a woman, an 18-year-old woman, had assaulted her boyfriend with a mason jar inside that home. Now, deputies say at some point two of her friends came to pick her up. As deputies arrived, those three women got into a car to leave. But before they did, they say one of the women smashed out the car on the patrol car. They took off with deputies following them. Now, at some point, another deputy stopped them out on Shanefield Road, was trying to take them into custody, and they say that 18-year-old assault suspect was able to slip out of her handcuff and then try to drive off again. Now, deputies finally got them stopped there on uh, Shanefield Road near Wild Horse, Horse Parkway, and that is where they took all three of them into custody. They're all facing charges of one kind or another. Uh, one of the people who they say was a passenger had some outstanding warrants, so that is what she is being held on. The other two face charges possibly related to attempted escape as well as the one who is facing charges related to uh, this alleged assault that happened at this home. All this starting before 3.30 this morning, still being investigated now. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, great job sorting all that out. We heard it on the scanners earlier this morning, and it was it was nuts out there. I right, thank you. The White House says it'll give updates on the response to monkeypox this morning. The World Health Organization says new cases reported last week were up about 20% from the week before. CNN's Amy Kiley reports on two recent developments that could help. Anyone who is in contact, in close contact with someone uh, who has monkeypox can also be exposed. New reported monkeypox cases have jumped over 20% worldwide in one week. The total U.S. count is approaching 14,000. Almost. And the Americas. The good news is the White House says the vaccine supply is improving even further. Some analysts say new CDC reforms could help. Back in 2009, uh, trust in the CDC hovered around 80 percent. Now it's closer to 60 percent. So that's obviously a significant concern. The CDC director admits the agency failed to reliably meet expectations related to COVID. We're seeing the same problems that plagued the COVID response happen once again with monkeypox. Now the CDC says it has a plan to improve. It involves better sharing of information, understandable communication, setting priorities and enhancing its workforce. They need to get a lot faster and be nimble. We can't be behind all these other countries as we've been during COVID and now monkeypox. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. Electric vehicle owners are getting new tax credits thanks to the Inflation Reduction Act. On a previous uh, credit of $7,500 only went to new EV owners, but only until automakers hit a 200,000 car limit. With the new system, buyers can still receive up to $7,500, but the limit has been removed. The new law also enacts limits on the cost of the cars and the income of the buyer. Electric vehicle currently on the market qualify for the full tax credit with the new requirements. And more Americans may get a glimpse of this amazing nature show without leaving the U.S. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration says several eruptions from the sun Sunday are headed towards Earth. Those eruptions could cause strong geomagnetic storms as soon as today. And according to NOAA, those storms could shift the northern lights further south. So that means if weather permits, people as far south from the polar region as Pennsylvania, Iowa and Oregon may be able to see the light show. They note the geostorms could also cause some problems here on Earth. They could disrupt the electric power grid as well as GPS, radio, and satellite operations. It sounds like something right out of Jurassic Park. Instead of dinosaurs,
tiger used to roam the Australian bush before its extension almost 100 years ago. An Australian research lab is leading the initiative to bring the species back to life. Scientists plan to harness advances in genetics, DNA retrieval, and artificial reproduction for the project, create a hybrid form of this apex predator. Interesting. Time now, 538 and 78 degrees for now. National Pizza Chain offering a slightly more healthy version of its pizza. We have details coming up. And if you've done some back to school shopping, you know it's more expensive this year. We're going to show you what a new survey says about just how much prices have gone up. Outside with live cam, what if we told you there were multiple chances for rain over several days? Justin has the beautiful details coming up. And for educators. Volunteers for the nonprofit Northern Virginia Family Service packing up hundreds of backpacks for a new school year as inflation takes a toll on family budgets. You have food that costs more and gas prices that are on the rise and you still have to pay rent and perhaps purchase medication, so on and so forth. Okay. percent over the last 12 months. Education books and supplies up 3.1 percent. Stationery up 11 percent like notebooks and paper. Still, after two school years interrupted by the COVID-19 pandemic, one expert says most parents and caregivers are willing to spend. Consumers really view this season as an essential category, regardless of what's going on with the economy. The National Retail Federation said more than a third of consumers to cover the cost of items for the school year. Shoppers have tried to ease costs, NRF says, by shortages. Inside this high school gymnasium in Prince George's County, Maryland, the school district is preparing more for families with more than one student, even small price increases can make a big difference in the cost of getting everyone ready. But so can drives like these with organizations willing to help. For Consumer Watch, I'm Karen Kafa. It's now 543. San Antonio Humane Society is up next with a pet looking for a new home. Still has that new car smell, the puppy breath. <laughs> <laughs> Him's here with San Antonio Humane Society. Aww. What a cutie. I love the wrinkled He's forehead. So cute, calm. This is Tim. Uh, Tim is a two month old little uh, terrier mix. Uh, definitely a little quiet right now, but you can tell it's going to get bigger. Yeah, he'll be a little shy, decent but size. There kind we of, go. Uh, what, 30 pound ish? Yes. Perhaps. Yeah. Just a guesstimate. Yes. Uh, short coat. Easy short to take coat. Care. Easy to take care of. Um, walks, especially when the weather starts turning cooler. So, and your uh, some kiddos are back at school. And he's got those eyes where he can just kind of yeah. put his head down a little bit and look up at you like I, I Aww, just yeah just like let I'm me, sorry let me sleep in bed promotion <laughs> empty the shelters that's still going on to the end of August and all of our dogs and cats excluding ambassadors are $25 wow so come and grab them yeah all of our dogs and cats are a year plus so mm -hmm. um, $25 a year older um, and come and come and adopt one so you can make room for another one and so full twice on huh? you because <laughs> you, you come with the puppy blood, so that's exactly actually, yes. exactly okay. well if you'd so. like information uh, again the nice thing about those older dogs you know he's uh, adorable as can be the exactly. older dogs you know exactly what you're getting yep. house broke you don't have to go through all of that so head on over for 4804 Fredericksburg Road 226 7461 thank you dear thank you in your morning consumer headlines new parents searching for baby formula may have a better chance of buying it now a market research firm says out of stock rates for powder baby formula are showing some improvement according to the firm's data 25 percent of the infant products were out of stock last week that is better than the rate was in mid-july when it hit a 31 percent high now the stock rate for other formula like ready to drink and liquid products is better than the powder versions only about 16 percent of these formulas showed out of stock that's good news. Well, Papa John's expanding its menu with a crustless surprise. Papa bowls, which are all toppings, no crust. There are three versions available, Steph. Garden veggie, chicken Alfredo, and Italian meats trio. Any of those sound good? 
They all sound good. Okay, great. Yeah. The pizza giant says these bowls offer a healthier alternative to consumers like Stephanie Serna. The <laughs> Papa Bowls will be available next week nationwide. Other restaurants like Marco's Pizza also offer something similar. I definitely want to give that a try. We'll try it out. Every once in a while, I try to be healthy. It's 548 right now. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cavazos. I eat the whole pizza. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Listen, no if guilt. I'm not, <laughs> if I'm not sharing with anyone, then I mean, hey, more, more to me, right? You don't I want guess. to go to waste, right? No, of yeah. course not. Listen, uh, not in this day and age, but let's get a look right now at traffic because things are moving just fine there. 35 in New Braunfels getting a little bit busy, and this is expected. We're getting closer to 6 a.m., so we we can expect to see traffic pick up in some of these spots where we see a lot of people commuting. But uh, just be on the look at we did have a crash. It looks like it just cleared out here near 281, not far from the airport. So wasn't really spotting anything on the trans guide camera, but at least one lane from our map there, but not really seeing anything that's hindering your commute at this point. So perfect time to head out. Just uh, expect some delays in the coffee line. But other than that, uh, we are going to see work continue here along FM 725 in Comal County. Operational improvements. We mentioned this yesterday, but it's current up until Thursday. We have at least another week to go starts at nine in the morning and hopefully we'll wrap around five in the afternoon. But it's during that time, expect a full closure of the northbound to southbound turnaround right there at I-35. So plan that commute ahead of time. Of course, that information is on our website, ksat.com slash traffic. But right now, traffic here on Transguide is moving just fine. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Uh, Justin, would yeah. you eat a bowl with just the pizza toppings, or are you like me and you want to order extra crust? Just to <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm with Stephen on this yeah. one. My better days, I could throw back a whole large pizza, no issues. Yeah. These days, yeah. heartburn. You just know, a medium. Sort of yeah, it's oh. just a medium. Okay. But yeah, no heartburn. <laughs> Yeah. All the toppings on the pizza. I want the whole thing. Uh, More on Justin's acid reflex coming up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Too much information. Okay. Uh, well, I came outside. 80 degrees at the airport. 77 Stinson. 76 Kelly. 78 at Randolph. We've got southerly winds for the most part. These are pretty light. We're not expecting a overly windy day or gusty winds. Uh, we could see some gusty winds, though, this evening with some showers and storms that develop to our north. 75 Kerrville. 77 Hondo. 77 Pleasant. And 78 right now in Gonzales. In mid to upper 70s here across Bear County right now. Dew points as they have been are awful high. It is super sticky out there and these dew points do come down some. I think that by the afternoon with high temperatures around 98, it shows up, feels like number around 99. Could even be a little higher than that, uh, depending on cloud cover. evening we absolutely could and here's why we've got some showers and storms across north texas right now along a frontal boundary yes i know it's been a while since we've talked about fronts but there is one there and it's uh, it's not terribly strong but it is sinking south and that's what's going to give lift to some showers and storms later today uh, there is a risk too by the way of some isolated stronger storms along that front so this area you see here in pink it's low end risk of, of chance for some stronger storms. I think gusty winds would be the main issue, and it's mainly north of San Antonio, so places like San Marcos and Austin is where we could see that red and rain chances. It gets far more active across the hill country, and then I think we have about a 40% chance here in San Antonio as these storms sink south. They probably break up a little bit as they do, so not everybody is going to get rain. It is one of those situations where it could be raining very hard on one side of town and not the other, but uh, hopefully, we spread out some of this rain some and uh, some of those areas that desperately need it and get some this evening by 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Just a few showers and then by the afternoon with that frontal boundary kind of washing out around the area, we still have some more opportunity here. 30% chance on your Friday afternoon before everything dies down Friday night. The rain chances, as I mentioned, are kind of tiered here. So 60% chance to the north. 40% chance San Antonio, I'd say uh, Bandera over towards Lakey. And then as you go south of town, the rain chances fall off. So Pleasanton and south of there, your rain chances are much, much lower this evening. And the timing, I'd say between 5 and 9 p.m. is when our best opportunity for rain is here in San Antonio. 40%, as I said. Very quickly in the tropics, uh, we're still watching that developing system. Right now it's starting to move over the Yucatan, but as it moves back out into the Gulf of Mexico, 
d there could be some development about a 30% chance. The uh, good news here is I, I don't think it really has a lot of time to develop. It will throw some tropical moisture in our next week that should give us some better chances of rain more efficient rain producers 98 degrees today 95 tomorrow 97 saturday saturday is probably a quiet day but as some of that tropical moisture makes its way in we add in the rain chances sunday and from there they actually go up 40 percent chance as it stands right now tuesday and wednesday if you if you're new to san antonio I hear my microphone. Okay, there it is. Yeah. If you're new to San Antonio, uh, in the past, this time of year, we're desperate for rain, mm -hmm. and the only way we get it, and sometimes it's way too much, is when something tropical kind of yeah. stalls out over our area. This is a much better scenario overall. Yeah, I, th I think it looks pretty good, and it's, it's a great change. Yeah. yeah, we'll take it. Yeah. 554, about 78 degrees. Look okay, at your winning lotto numbers. We have three. 665, five, Fireball 0, Daily 4, 4855, five, Fireball 5. Cash 5 numbers 10, 17, 21, 31, 34, Lotto Texas 10, 15, 17, 36, 50, and 51. If you're still sort of waking up, I'll do this one on the down low. Powerball 23, 28, 41, 50, 55, Powerball 24, Power Play 2. Good luck. Coming up here on a Thursday on GMA, the latest on the CDC's admission of failure concerning its response to the COVID-19 pandemic. They're saying changes will be implemented as concern grows over the monkeypox outbreak. And then new developments in the case of the once prominent South Carolina attorney, Alex Murdoch. That and so much more, I'm here in Tampa on our Closer to Home tour. You don't want to miss it on GMA. Ahead in the next hour of Good Morning San Antonio, cleanup still underway over in the Houston area after hundreds of gallons of gasoline spilled into Tabs Bay. We'll have the latest. And a man is dead this morning after he was struck by a vehicle last night on the city's southwest side. The driver who hit him is still on the run. Checking Trans Guide right now as your morning commute is getting going. Live look at 410 at Callahan Road on the northwest side. We'll check in with Stephen Cavazos. And rain is back in the forecast. Justin's in for Mike. He has more coming up. This highway, Southwest Loop 410, coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you what we know. Breeze, we are excited about chances of rain. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. You heard her right. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday morning, August 18th. Thank you for joining us. Hope you're having a wonderful week and excited about that and also excited about, I don't want to say, a little cooler temperatures along with it. Well, with clouds uh, and the rain chances, that uh, that definitely helps us out in that department. And I just realized that there's there's rain out there right now. Yeah, th not here specifically right. around South Texas, but across Texas. And that that's encouraging because we know there's a frontal battery there. We know that's going to be getting a little closer to us this evening. And I think it brings us some rain chances here. So, yes, things are looking better and better. Seven-day forecast, you're going to love it. Uh, as we look at the situation right now, the showers and storms are up around the Lubbock along the Red River. We've noticed some storms across central Texas as well. There is our front, and this is not a strong front, but it is enough to kick up some showers and storms a little bit later today. High temperatures, still hot, 98 degrees here in town today, 100 in Laredo. It is cooler, though, across north Texas behind that front. Uh, most of the days can be pretty quiet here in San Antonio. It's not until the evening hours that we start to add in those rain chances. And here's how I think it times out. Our best shot will be around dinner time, and that goes to about 9 o'clock. So 40% chance. Could see a couple strong storms mixed in there, too. We'll talk more about that, plus the rain chances down the road in that 7-day forecast coming up in just a bit. Let's check in with Stephen now and talk about the traffic. Well, the roads here are very dry, so that's not a bad thing. Uh, listen, the commit's going to be a pretty easy one, at least at this point. 37 at Houston as we get a quick look around town 35 at New Braunfels uh, getting a little busier as we can always expect 6 a.m. is that time when folks get their morning started so just watch out and especially watch out for the school buses lots of kids still returning to class today so just be careful are they heading back to school I should say getting a look at the map uh, right now you can see just a lot of green there on the screen and active construction spots
We're going to tell you about that a little bit later on, but it doesn't look like anything is causing slowdowns just yet, but we'll keep a close eye on things. And as we take a look at those travel times, it's still pretty green. If you are going to be traveling in from Seguin, 29 minutes at this point, I 10 westbound, and it's a little more than half an hour. If you're traveling up 87 and Lavernia in those northbound lanes and a 28 minute drive time heading in from Floridasville, no delays just yet, but we're going to watch the cl roads closely and give you more updates right here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. The day may just be getting started, but three women already are in a lot of trouble in West Bear County. Sheriff's deputies arrested them after a wild encounter, and they say it included an assault, two attempts at escaping, and a broken car window. Katrina Weber is live where deputies caught them on Shanefield Road, not far from Wild Horse Parkway. And Katrina, as you showed us earlier, that broken window was on a deputy's uh, patrol vehicle. How did that happen? Well, uh, that happened when the deputy responded to a house not far from here on a street called Round Ridge. Now, that deputy just pulling up to that house for an attempted assault at that location. He says that one of three women who came out of that house then smashed the back window on that patrol vehicle. Now, that is where this all started. We're here where it ended with those three women who were in this car here behind me uh, being taken into custody. And deputies say... Look at this. this scene from how things were earlier this morning when deputies had swarmed this area trying to catch up with those three women. Take you back, back to the beginning. This started about 3.30 this morning. The deputy was responding to that home over on Round Ridge for an assault there. Uh, he says an 18-year-old woman had hit her boyfriend with a mason jar. Now, at some point, two of her friends in the car that we see in the video had come to pick her up. As they were leaving, one of them then smashed the patrol car and took off. Deputies followed that car, uh, tried to, uh, they did get it to stop at one point. They started taking those three women. up on the sidewalk, which is where you see that car now in the video and here live. She ended up on the sidewalk. Deputies were finally able to get her into custody along with her two friends. And they say that all three of them are facing charges. At least two of them uh, involved uh, will be charged with uh, escaping or attempting to evade authorities. The one woman involved in the alleged assault is facing a charge related to that. And then they say the third woman had an outstanding warrant. So all three of them starting their and uh, again, uh, deputies just finishing up here at the scene, but uh, they are still investigating this case. But it looks like, again, those three women in a lot of trouble this morning. West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. New this morning, a man is dead after attempting to cross a busy highway on the city's southwest side. Our right, Jonathan Cotto joins us live and walks us through this horrible incident. That's right, Stephanie, that uh, crash happening right here on the 8100 block of Southwest Loop 410. This is near Cento Road, happening around 10 p.m. last night. But let's take a look at what that scene looked like on your screen, a busy and disruptive scene on Southwest Loop 410. Police say the victim was a man in his 30s or 40s and was pronounced dead at the scene. The driver who struck the Police arrived at the scene. They became a part of that scene. Take a listen. While the police were setting up to try to block off the freeway, um, an individual came along and struck one of the police cars. Now, luckily, no officer second vehicle that struck into the unit were taken to an area hospital just uh, as a procedure, as protocol. Um, and right now, it's unclear if that driver will be facing any charges. But this crash is under investigation. Reporting live from the city's southwest side, Jonathan Cotto, KSET 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man in his 20s is in critical condition after a shooting on the northwest side. And officers are still looking for the shooter. Officers received multiple calls to the 4000 block of Gardendale around 945 last night for shots fired. When police got there, they found the man in his mid to late 20s with several gunshot wounds, including at least one to the neck. SAPD says the gunman ran off from the scene after the shooting. The victim was taken to a hospital where he is currently in critical condition.
This morning, investigators are trying to determine the cause of yet another fire at a home on the west side that's been set on fire three previous times. Now, for the fourth time, firefighters were called to this house in the 3300 block of West Gerald Avenue near Quintana Road before 6 yesterday evening. Now, crews say when they got there, the fire was coming out of the front of the house. They were able to put the flames out quickly. We're told no one was hurt, and we're also told that the homeowner is in the process of renovating that house. Some other top stories this morning. This was how Texas's Tabs Bay in the Houston area looked on Monday morning after an oil spill. According to the Coast Guard, oil spilled from a flow line into the bay and they had to put more than 2,000 feet of absorbent booms to the affected areas. Pollution responders say up to 420 gallons of crude oil entered the water. Fortunately, there are no reports of affected wildlife. Happening today, the Florida judge who approved the FBI search of former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago home will hold a hearing to decide whether to unseal the affidavit used to justify that search. The judge is set to hold a hearing this afternoon after several media outlets requested the document be made public. However, the Justice Department has requested the document remain sealed as it could cause, as they say, significant and irreparable damage to the ongoing criminal investigation. Back here at home, the cost of living is getting more difficult to reach for families who are low income or extremely low income. Haven for Hope has seen a rise in the number of families who are working but simply cannot afford to find a home. Now, many other agencies that serve those in need are also seeing. are partnering up to find affordable housing as a short-term solution. Meanwhile, several projects are in the works to build homes and units that low-income families can afford. In May, San Antonio voters approved a $1.2 billion bond that will partly help create affordable housing. That process will begin in a few months. So it's a coordinated effort, um, and we think that we'll have really good products and, and housing units to, in, in hopefully just a, a short amount of time. Not only are leaders trying to convince landlords to allocate affordable units now, they also have to convince communities to allow the development of low income housing. And time now, 610 and 77 degrees for now. Much more to come on GMSA. A little bit later, we'll tell you about the heartbreaking story in Milwaukee this morning. A man falls to his death after a drawbridge opens while he is still walking on it. We'll have the latest in the investigation. And as our back to school coverage continues this week, SAISD is starting the year with a group that will become the first graduating class, class in a special program. We're gonna be talking with the man who helped put it all together. The CDC looking at a major overhaul. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. The blistering new report on the agency coming up. And outside with live cam on your Thursday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us right here on KSAT 12 as you look live out towards the airport right now waiting for the sun to come up and rain is in the forecast over several days. Justin has more straight ahead. And welcome back at 614. A new batch of revamped COVID-19 shots could be available to millions of Americans within the next three weeks. As the boost shots are made to target the original COVID strain and the Omicron BA4 and BA5 subvariants. As for the CDC plans and the rollout, news this morning about a major reset from the nation's top public health agency. ABC's Faith Abube is in Washington with the latest. This morning, the Centers for Disease Control urging states to begin pre-ordering newly updated COVID-19 booster shots. As new data shows, while the rate of new infections continues to fall, virus-related deaths remain high. An average of about 400 American COVID deaths being reported every day. The original COVID-19 strain and the BA4 and 5 subvariants making up an estimated 99% of all new infections. The revamped shots meant to target those dominant strains. These are substantial upgrades in our vaccines, and those vaccines are coming very, very soon. The FDA and CDC could approve the boosters within the next three weeks and make them available to anyone 12 and up for Pfizer and 18 and over for Moderna. 
Amid the booster rollout plan, the CDC also headed for a major overhaul. A new blistering review of the agency found during this and the previous administration, the nation's top public health agency failed to meet expectations amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky, who ordered the internal review, calling for a reset, telling agency staff, quote, we are responsible for some pretty dramatic, pretty public mistakes. The agency review found the CDC's COVID-19 guidelines on masks, vaccines and more have been confusing and overwhelming. And that was ABC's Faith Abube reporting. Let's check on traffic, 616. Been a quiet start so far, and as we get a look around town, thankfully not a lot to show you there, but just some heavy traffic uh, that is picking up along US 90, but that's always expected because a lot of folks are traveling in from Castroville, but you can see there at 281 at Grayson, uh, it's also picking up possibly in the southbound lanes, I believe, uh, as more folks are waking up and getting their day started. But always be on the lookout, although we're not seeing anything major that's slowing people down on the map, we are going to be seeing some active construction here along I-10 in, in Kendall County. Pardon me. Now, this this is an area where we see so much work taking place and more work will continue up until Friday, August 19th, according to TxDOT. That will take place from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon. It's during that time a single lane closure on the westbound frontage road. That's going to be from scenic loop road to US 87. That information, though, on our website, grab those phones. The QR code is coming up on your screen. Now you can open your camera app and tap the center of your screen. That will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page, and that has a list of all the closures taking place in and around the Alamo City. Justin Horn. Thank you, sir. As the kids head off to the bus stop this morning, no big issues. We've got mostly clear skies actually at the moment, and the temperatures are warm. We're in the upper 70s. Uh, winds out in the south, 5 to 10 miles per hour. It's a little humid out there. This afternoon, still looks okay. Just really hot, 98 degrees. It'll be one of those put down the windows on the bus type days. Heat index will be near 100. It's this evening where we start to see some rain chances coming back into the forecast. Before we talk about that forecast, though, very quickly, we want to pass along that there was a tornado on Monday. If you were watching during the noon show on Monday, we reported a tornado warning. And in fact, a very brief weak tornado touchdown right around along I-35 south and west of San Antonio. Peak winds were at 75 miles per hour. That was with that tropical low. Remember, we got a few spin ups. Didn't do a whole lot of damage. There was some reports of damage to a roof and some trees there, but wanted to pass that along. That was back on Monday. Outside right now, we've got, again, mostly clear skies, 79 degrees. Dew point is at 73 and feels like 82 outside. 74 Kerrville, 74 New Valley, 79 Catula, 78 Gonzales, and temperatures in the mid-70s here around Bear County. And as uh, we look at the forecast heat index today, it's going to be back up near 100. Yesterday was right there. I mean, yesterday was a hot day. Today will look very similar. The one change, though, is that potential for rain this evening, and that's what we're kind of excited about here. We look at the big picture. There is rain across North Texas right now. Some pretty good heavy rain up along the uh, Red River near Wichita Falls, back over towards Lubbock, and seeing a few showers uh, just north of Houston at this hour. That is along a weak frontal battery, which uh, sinks uh, south into the area by uh, again, this evening, and that's when our rain chances start to jump up. So let's time it out here. 2 p.m., we've got some showers, isolated showers and storms popping up north of San Antonio. By 5 p.m., it becomes more widespread. 40% chance of rain here in town, better chances as you go north. And then some of those showers and storms sink south into the area by 10 p.m. And then by midnight, I think most of that's dying down. Tomorrow, that frontal boundary will still be around, so there's an opportunity for more isolated showers and storms, 30% chance on your Friday. And then uh, Saturday is probably a, a quieter day. As far as rain chances go, 60% chance this afternoon and this evening up across the hill country. As I said, San Antonio, about a 40% chance, and that goes for Bandera, Lake East, Seguin, New Braunfels as well. And then south of San Antonio, it's a 20% chance, lower chances for rain as this boundary kind of stalls out up across the northern part of our viewing area. As uh, far as the case at 12 hour forecast goes, 81, 9 a.m. We go 95 by 2 p.m. We start to add in some rain chances by uh, dinner time, 8 degrees by 5 p.m., 40% chance of rain. And we've been talking about what's going on in the tropics, too, that weak system that may develop. But the bigger story is it throws some tropical moisture in our direction. This yellow, this yellow orange color you see here, that's deeper tropical moisture. That arrives by Sunday and early next week, and that brings more rain chances. So the seven day
Really good look in here. Uh, 95 degrees uh, Friday, 30% chance of rain. 97 Saturday, just a small chance, but 20% chance Sunday. And if all the things come together here, which I think we get some disturbances, some of that tropical moisture, then we get to up our rain chances next week. Right now, 30% chance Monday, 40% chance of some downpours Tuesday and Wednesday, guys. Thank you, Justin. 620, about 77 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, you may want to think twice about throwing a party at your next Airbnb today. We're going to tell you why after the break. And just ahead, witnesses are saying a former NFL player started a brawl at a youth football game. Lancaster, just south of Dallas, that led to the death of a coach. That's coming up in your GMA First Look. This is the moment for a treatment for moderate to severe eczema. Sabinko, FDA approved. 100% steroid free, not an injection. Sabinko is a once daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments. And Sabinko helps provide clearer skin and less itch. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are... ...to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers, serious heart-related events, and blood clots can happen. People older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with jack inhibitors. This is the moment, but we've only just begun. Speak with your doctor about Sabinko today, an innovation from Pfizer. In this morning's GMA First Look, new details on the investigated by NFL star Akib Talib, who they say was arguing on the field. Police say the argument led to the physical altercation, the incident ending, police say, with Akib's brother Yakub Talib pulling out a gun and opening fire. Overnight, GMA speaking to two of the victim's lifelong friends. He was a leader in so much so that when you go to his house, you can feel the absence of him. Mike was you know, a great friend, great person that wanted everyone to be successful. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have a live report from Texas and the very latest on the investigation. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Topping today's Tech Bites, the countdown to Apple's next big announcement. Reports say the iPhone 14 line will be unveiled at a streaming event on September 7th. Other products are also expected to be rolled out, including three Apple Watch models. They're expected to be in store shortly after the event. Airbnb has launched new technology that can help identify people who rent homes just to throw parties. The screening tools are able to zero in on suspicious reservations and can block them before homeowners ever see that request. 625, about 77 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour of GMSA, a Hayes County inmate is dead this morning after suffering what officials are calling a medical emergency. We're going to tell you about it. One area school district beginning the year with some staff bringing weapons to confront the issue of school security. We'll have more on that. Tragedy in the Midwest this morning. A man falls to his death in Wisconsin after a drawbridge was opened while he was still on it. We're going to have those details. Up in North Texas, a school district near Fort Worth removing dozens of books from its libraries. We will tell you why. And taking a look outside with live cam, we had a little bit of break in temperatures earlier this week. Now we're looking forward to some more. And rain too, which is awesome. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, August 18th. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're excited about those chances of rain happening. door with an umbrella this morning because those rain chances are going to hold off until probably dinner time, but they are in the forecast. We got to get through one more hot day. Today is still going to be pretty toasty. We think we'll get up to around 98 or so. And like yesterday, that's going to feel like it's above 100 because we still have a lot of humidity in place. Evening storms, scattered storms, especially north of I-10. So if you're watching us from San Antonio and Hill Country, 
better rain chances this evening. Unfortunately, those south of town, not as great, but uh, we do have more rain chances in the forecast. So there'll be more opportunities uh, with the pattern becoming more active going into next week. Right now, 79 degrees, starting to see a little bit of light on the horizon out there. Dew point is at 73. That's that high humidity I was talking about. Feels like 82 degrees outside. And looking at the big picture here, a lot of rain across North Texas. That is along that boundary, which right now is uh, sitting to our north. This does not move all the way through. Doesn't really cool us down all that much. But again, it is the reason we have rain chances in the forecast later today. 81 degrees at 9 o'clock. By noontime, 92. Still mostly sunny at 1 p.m., 94. But then we start to add in some rain chances, especially as we get to the 5 o'clock hour, 98 degrees. And temperatures should fall a little bit with some added clouds. And again, chances for rain there. We'll talk more about this forecast. And again, the more active pattern next week, too. That's coming up in just a bit. But things beginning to pick up on the roads. Let's get the latest from Steven. That's right, Ted. It's six. And here. Here's a perfect example, US 90 at 36. And if you're familiar with this spot, you know it's going to be heavily uh, traveled, especially around this hour. And that's because a lot of folks are making their way into the Alamo City. So what we're looking at looks like it could be those eastbound lanes of US 90 where traffic is picking up. But the reason why I'm showing you this shot is because we are also seeing off in the distance there so dark, but it does look like almost an abandoned vehicle. Not sure if anyone's inside or not, but you have to walk anytime a vehicle off in the shoulder lane. The best thing to do is move over, slow down, and hey, those are also the rules of the road, so just make sure to follow them correctly. Taking you to the map, it's been a pretty quiet start. Really haven't had a whole lot to talk about in my section of the studio, but you can see just some quiet roadways is a great way for anyone to start their day. Just drive carefully and again, watch out for situations. Anytime you see a stalled vehicle like that, just again, make sure to move over or slow down. We'll be bringing you those traffic updates in the next few minutes. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. What began on a West Bear County street put three women on the road to trouble. Sheriff's deputies say they caused a commotion in a neighborhood which left a patrol car with a broken window, then tried to drive away. Katrina Weber is live where deputies caught them on Shanefield Road, not too far from Wild Horse Parkway. And Katrina, what kinds of charges are they facing? Well, some of them are facing more serious charges than the others, uh, but basically everything from criminal mischief to aggravated assault. Now, this is where those three women were finally arrested. Their car came to a stop on the curb there up against a tree. But let me show you some video from where things began around 3.30 this morning. Now, uh, deputies had gone to a home on a street called Round Ridge uh, to investigate a report about an assault. They believed that an 18-year-old woman hit her boyfriend with a mason jar. As the deputy arrived to investigate, that is when that woman and two others were leaving the house. They say one of those women picked up something, smashed the back window on the deputy's car. They then jumped into their car and drove away. That deputy radioed for help. Other deputies spotted the three women in the car, managed to stop them and started to take them all into custody. But they say that 18-year-old woman involved in the assault then slipped out of her handcuffs, jumped back into her car, and then took off again. And then again, that is when uh, deputies managed to get her to stop. She ended up on the curb. They took all three women into custody. And again, they're looking at charges ranging from criminal mischief for that broken window to aggravated assault related to uh, that 18 year old woman allegedly hitting her boyfriend. But it was a wild morning, according to deputies here. And uh, they finally did get both of these scenes cleared up. So it looks almost like nothing happened, but those women definitely facing charges. So they know for sure that something did happen. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. A vehicle while trying to cross the highway on the southwest side. This happened around 10 p.m. last night at Southwest Loop 410 near Sinto Road. Now, police say the man believed to be in his 30s or 40s died at the scene. The driver who struck him with their vehicle took off. Now, while officers were the patrol unit was heavily damaged. SAPD says the people in the second vehicle were taken to the hospital for evaluation. Right now, it's not clear if the driver will face any charges. 
And also new this morning, an inmate who was being held at the Hayes County Jail just south of Austin is dead this morning after suffering a medical emergency. That is according to the Hayes County Sheriff's Office. They say 41 year old James Knight was taken to the hospital after that incident, but their life saving measures were not successful. Right now, authorities do not think Knight's death is suspicious, but they are still waiting on autopsy results. Knight was in jail on multiple charges. You can read more about this story right now on our website at kset.com. The search is on for this man. San Antonio police say he's accused in the death of a six month old son. This is 24 year old Ronald Williams. Hospital staff called police when they saw the child Sunday. They say Williams's explanation for the injuries did not add up. Eventually that child died. If you know where Williams is, call homicide detectives. Their number is 210-207-7635. Some other top stories we're following for you this morning. A sad story out of Milwaukee. after he fell from a drawbridge. Now that man's family wants to know why that bridge was opening while he was still walking on it. ABC's Christine Sloan has the details. This morning, there are questions as to why a bridge operator opened a Milwaukee drawbridge while a man was walking on it, sending him falling 70 feet to his death. Surveillance video cameras show the man in the middle of the bridge as it begins to rise. The victim identified as 77-year-old Richard Dujardin. His family now wants answers. The biggest question is if anybody's responsible for this. Dujardin's son says his father, visiting from Rhode Island, was wearing a hearing aid as he walked across the Kilbourne Avenue Bridge with his wife on Monday. Dujardin was using an iPad to find his way to church. Alarm bells sound off before the gates come down and the bridge goes up. The medical examiner's office believes Dujardin didn't hear the warning. Department of Public Works officials say the bridge operator who remotely monitors from a tower a mile away is required to check two live cameras before closing the bridge. If there are anything that uh, needs to change um, in our processes, we will, of course, uh, evaluate those things. This tragedy, just one of several nationwide, of people getting caught off guard when a drawbridge opens. And I see one lady, I don't know how to explain it, but she fell out. A 79-year-old woman fell 50 feet to her death as this West Palm Beach bridge opened this past spring. Her attorney says the operator should have checked three cameras. This trial to cross a rising bridge. He slides off, isn't injured, but issued a careless driving citation. Christine Sloan, ABC News, New York. In California, the L.A. County coroner has ruled actress Anne Heche's death an accident. The Department of the Medical Examiner coroner says she died from inhalation and thermal injuries. Heche also had a sternal fracture, most likely from her chest, hitting the steering wheel after a crash. August 5th, her car ran off the road and collided into a home in Los Angeles. A massive fire broke out after the crash. Heche was in a coma for more than a week before her family took her off life support on August 12th. A North Texas school district has removed 41 books from its school libraries. The Keller Independent School District says it is reviewing the titles that were challenged over the last year. Books on the list include all versions of the Bible and Anne Frank's diary, the graphic adaption. Now, earlier this month, the school board adopted a new book selection policy and guidelines. It requires any challenged book to be pulled from the shelves until a review is complete. Students in Lavernia ISD returned to school yesterday. It was also started the district's guardian program. The school board voted to approve plans for armed staff on campus just weeks before the Robb Elementary School shooting. Dr. Michael Duffick, the district's director of safety and security, says the guardian program was met with 88% approval from the community, 80% approval by staff. They've added signs at each campus, letting everyone know that staff are armed and trained. There are a lot of ins and outs. The program are being kept quiet. The state requires guardians to have classroom and training along with an annual psychological exam, a license to carry and submission to random drug tests. And while Lavernia is relying on staff, one Comal County man has a slightly different proposal to protect local schools. Tonight on the Night Beat, what he says sets his plan apart from others. 
And as your kiddos go back to school, pediatricians at University Health System have advice for families. Dr. Dina Tom says eating and sleeping well are vital for students. She says teens need about eight hours of sleep and the little ones need about 10 hours. It's normal for children when they go back to school to come home later in the day and be exhausted. My kids kind of get a little bit moody in the afternoons. They might be, um, you know, a little upset about things. And that is a sign of them being tired. That's normal. But if you're finding that that's not really improving as school goes on, you're really having to wake them up in the morning and they're exhausted. They don't want to go to school or they come home and they want to take a nap. Those are signs that they probably need more sleep and they probably need to work a little bit on You need to work on their diet. And when it comes to breakfast, Dr. Tom says things like SAISD is starting the year with a group that will become the first graduating class for that special program. We're going to be talking with a man who is helping to help shape their futures. Good morning. Welcome back. 644. This week was the start of school for SAISD and for SAISD's Casmet High School. This is school year number four, meaning their first group will graduate at the end of the school year. Casmet High School's partnership coordinator is Dr. Anthony Kasravi, and he joins us now live. Good morning, Dr. Kasravi. Hi, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Well, you know, first off, we understand that you coordinate all the internships and job shadowing for those students pursuing medical careers. Can you tell us about all the opportunities for the students at Castmed High School? Definitely. So our students have a, a, a unique opportunity uh, where my particular responsibility is connecting them with industry experts inside of the healthcare profession so that they can participate in internships. So this past summer, we had over 70 students uh, participate in very uh, some of them with um, our children's hospitals here in San Antonio. Others were private clinics. And so they have the opportunity to work hand in hand with physicians, nurses, and medical professionals in order to get a real sense of their future uh, career expectations. Anthony, tell us uh, about two things, about CASMED's uh, new accountability rating from TEA. We understand you guys are real proud of that. Also tell us about the school's first graduating class. Yeah, so we are really excited. This is the, the fourth year of the school. And so uh, our seniors this year started uh, four years ago with us as freshmen. And we are really proud of our accountability rating. We are an A campus uh, here in San Antonio ISD. And so uh, a lot of that is due to everyone that's part of our educational system, from our parents who get our students to school, our students who work so hard, and of course our great teachers that provide instruction. So we're really proud of, of, of being an A campus this school year. That's good news. And we have been covering stories about these nursing shortages. How are you hoping the programs at Cast Med can help out? So the very creation of Cast Med High School is, is based on that, knowing that the San Antonio area is in need of medical professionals. And so the Cast Schools Network, along with SAISD, uh, formed this particular collaborative school. And our focus is to help students bridge the gap between high school and their college expectations. So we also offer dual credit courses here. Students can participate through our higher ed partner with Texas A&M and complete college courses while working on their high school diploma. And then we also noticed that part of the healthcare profession here in San Antonio really needed to meet the needs with regards to our population, which are Spanish speakers. So we also offer a dual language program here at Casamet High School. So on top of dual credit, there's dual language and the hope is we hope to increase or decrease, I should say, um, the lack of medical professionals uh, here in San Antonio. What can students who are interested in the medical field do to be a part of this program? So we currently are still accepting ninth and 10th grade uh, students here for this school year. Uh, anybody who's interested can visit our castschools.net website and our SAISD uh, Casmet High School website. And, and we're more than happy to take in any student who is interested in going into a medical profession or any interest in the healthcare professions. All right, Dr. Anthony Kasravi, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you, we appreciate it. Have a great school year. Um, 647 right now. Let's go ahead and check back with Stephen Cabasos. How's the morning drive going, Stephen? It, it's been nice, I would say. Uh, you know, if you have to head out on the roads in the next few minutes, of course, you can expect a few slowdowns, but uh, that's normal. Nothing major is going to be impacting the roadways at this point. 37 at Houston, you can see pretty light traffic. But I should say maybe more normal traffic, but let's get a look at the map because although we haven't seen any major issues, the usual slowdowns, 1604 on the northwest side near Holotus, also seeing it here along State Highway 151 on the west 
side of San Antonio and of course here along 410. Now these usual spots uh, is where we see those slowdowns, so it's nothing out of the ordinary, but make sure to plan ahead. We have a lot of road work taking place, and as a quick reminder, here off I-10 in the east side of Bear County, there is some detour work that's been ongoing. Should be wrapping on Friday, August 19th. It's from 9 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon, but crews do get out there a little bit earlier. Eastbound exit and the entrance ramps from Santa Clara will be closed, so just expect that, but of course, that information is on our website at ksat.com slash traffic, but Justin Horn, what can we expect weather-wise? Well, it's going to be quiet for most of the day until we get into the evening hours. That's when some showers and storms may pop up, and we could see some pretty good coverage, especially San Antonio and points north. Outside right now, though, very quiet. We've got mostly clear skies, 79 degrees at the airport, 76 Denton, 75 at Kelly, and really cold winds across the board. You'll find most places in the 70s this morning, 74 in Kerrville, 78 in Del Rio, and mid to upper 70s here around San Antonio at this hour. Sun will be up soon. We'll see those temperatures rise. You combine it with the thick humidity we already have in place and heat indices are going to jump up above 100 later this afternoon, especially considering dew points are in the mid 70s right now. So the temperature around four o'clock, say 98 degrees here in town, it'll feel like 102. Uh, be aware of that. The heat, uh, this is kind of our last day of, of some really hot temperatures, I think, with rain in the forecast uh, that helps to bring temperatures down a little bit. And speaking of that rain, where is it right now? Well, most of the showers and storms we see are still up across North Texas, and that is just behind a weak frontal boundary, which right now is still sitting to our north. But as it slides a little further south this evening, that's when our rain chances pick up. There's also an opportunity for one or two strong storms in this area you see outlined in pink really north and east of San Antonio, it would be isolated. And I think the best chance for any sort of severe weather would just be some gusty winds. Something we'll keep an eye on. Uh, of course, the bigger story is the fact that we're just getting some rain here. Well, let's look at the forecast. And around 2 o'clock this afternoon, we get some pop-up showers north of San Antonio in the parts of the hill country. And then by 5 o'clock, these start to move a little farther south. 40% chance of rain here in San Antonio. Better chances to the north around dinner time. And then by 10 p.m., still seeing some of these pop-up showers and storms. And I'll point out that, again, this is going to be hit or miss. Not everyone is going to get rain out of this. Uh, but it, hopefully there will be some good downpours in some spots, pick up some good rain, uh, considering we're still very much in a drought. By tomorrow morning, a few isolated showers. And then tomorrow afternoon, we see more isolated showers and storms as this frontal boundary sort of hangs around and gives us some opportunities uh, tomorrow and tomorrow afternoon. As far as rain chances go today, 60% chance across the hill country, 40% chance here around San Antonio. And as you go south of town, rain chances unfortunately fall off pretty quickly. This is uh, this front's going to kind of hang up to our north, and that's the reason for that. Uh, the best time period for rain again between 5 and 9 p.m. this evening at least here in San Antonio, with that 40% chance of rain. Very quickly out in the tropics, we're still tracking what's going on in the, the Caribbean. Uh, this little system here is now moving over land. It's going to move over the Yucatan and then move into the Gulf of Mexico. There's still some potential here for development, about a 30% chance according to the Hurricane Center. But I really don't think this has a huge impact on us other than it will throw some moisture in our direction, and that is actually a really good thing because by next week, with some tropical moisture and some disturbances rolling through, we'll have some better chances of rain. 98 today, 95 tomorrow, 97 Saturday, probably our quietest day, and then 94 Sunday with some increasing moisture, and those rain chances kick up, as I said, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. What a difference this month has been. Yes. It has been amazing, and I'm glad to see these changes. Me too. We are too. Yeah. Time now, 651 and 77 degrees. Just, just what I was going to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was predicting it. <laughs> With Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat, teens have their faces buried in screens just about every day. But at what age are teens at highest risk for the negative impacts of social media? The answer might surprise you. That's tomorrow on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam. Mark is right, August has been awesome so far. And just look at the beautiful sky. 77 degrees. We'll be right back. Time check 655. Things are quiet here on Transguy, but we just got to get you right to the map because we are starting to see some slowdowns right there uh, in some of those major areas where people are commuting. But I got to take you guys a little bit north of New Braunfels. A crash has been reported, but we're going to watch it closely off I-35 southbound at FM 306. What we can see here is that there's no delays, so that's some good news. And hopefully those first responders are on the clearing stages. I'll get our friends on Transguy on the phone, find out exactly what the conditions look like. Start off. Pretty quiet today. Temperatures will make it up to around 92 by noontime. 
eventually up to 98 this afternoon. So it's still a hot day, but we start to bring in some rain chances by dinner time and going into this evening and tonight about a 40% chance of some showers and storms. Could see some gusty winds with some of these storms. And this is going to be the I-10 and points north. Some more chances tomorrow, quieter this weekend, and then more chances next week. Okay. Very exciting. Thank you for joining us today. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.